there, everyone, and welcome to the final bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the chief market strategist here at StockCharts.com in a sunny and beautiful Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we break down the market action using the tools of the technical analyst as featured on StockCharts.com. Looking at the major averages today, sort of a lower open stronger action through the uh, the course of the uh, of the day today and if you look at the S&P 500 you see we have a new all-time closing high 5375 that pushes the S&P 500 up about point uh, we'll call it a quarter of a percent higher uh, you can see the Nasdaq composite really leading the way higher Apple with the World Wide Developers Conference WWDC yesterday uh, really pushing uh, higher with their, uh, I guess, the way that they describe their uh, their plans to incorporate AI into uh, into all that they do. So if you've seen Apple as a laggard, which it has been versus other AI plays, certainly getting a bid today. We'll look at the chart of Apple in a little while uh, for sure. The Dow, of course, net negative today, down about a third of a percent. So this, we're back to that sort of familiar NASDAQ up, Dow down, S&P stuck in the middle sort of a pattern. Mid caps, small caps, both getting dinged as well, both down about 0.4 percent uh, from yesterday. The VIX pushing slightly higher, but no real change here. We remain in the low teens. And uh, again, generally speaking, VIX above 15 for me is a cause for concern. VIX below 15 is uh, slow and steady, low volatility, uh, gaining uh, market. And that is uh, certainly where I would see us here in, uh, on June 11, 2024. Interest rates overall moving lower, the yield curve sort of drifting uh, to the downside a little bit, the 10-year uh, yield uh, around 4.4%. Uh, it's about the same for the five-year point. The long bond yield is at 454. So we saw rates come down through the course of the uh, of the day today. Overall, the trend in rates has certainly been weaker uh, rather than stronger, certainly not hurting the uh, the uh, growth trade, certainly the technology sector, which is dominating returns here uh, recently. The commodity space, you can see the DBC down about 0.1%. Gold actually bouncing higher after showing some weakness recently, up about a third of a percent. The GLD is just above uh, 214. Silver prices and copper prices were both lower. Crude oil prices actually hanging in there uh, just fine. And spot crude oil actually very close once again to $80 a barrel, which is that line in the sand we've been uh, we've been talking about. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other uh, ten of the others of the ten uh, most common coins that we track on our platform all in the red in a pretty big way. Bitcoin getting uh, pushed lower today, currently around 67,300, just slightly below that. Ether price is just below uh, 3,500. Those are both down three to 5% today. Looking at the uh, 11 S&P sectors, you can see technology up about 2%, and that is by far the top performer. You take Apple, you take technology out of the picture, this is a down day in a, in a big way. And you look at some of the breadth data, which was really rough today, you know, shows you the differentiation or the difference between the market benchmarks as defined by mega cap growth stocks and the average stock, which probably did not look particularly strong today. Communication services was slightly above zero, about 0.2% higher. Materials was flat for the day. And those are your top three performing sectors. On the bottom, you have financials down 1.2%. Um, some of the names like Citigroup and others really getting uh, getting hurt today. Utilities, number two, about two-thirds of a percent lower. And industrials, number three, down by about 0.6%. Looking at the Magnificent Seven and Friends, and again, still actively looking for a better way to describe that list of stocks. But we'll stick with that for now because uh, it, it, it uh, flows off the, uh, the lips very easily. Apple, your top performer by far, biggest uh, gainer, uh, in the, generally speaking, uh, in the uh, S and P, is that true? Before I say, yeah, I was going to say it wasn't the top performer, but it was uh, it was certainly up there compared to uh, compared to others. That well, was the top performer, up seven percent. So we have uh, Apple uh, up seven percent, Microsoft, uh, and uh, that's it. Yeah, Microsoft, Meta, Alphabet, all up about 0.9 to one percent. Only two of these stocks down. Nvidia actually down 0.7 percent. So true story, Nvidia can close lower. Tesla uh, is at the bottom of the list, 1.8%. So we continue to see Tesla uh, diverge from the rest of the uh, of the markets, looking a lot less like a Magnificent 7 stock and a lot more like electric vehicle stocks, which overall have been in a primary downtrend uh, for the most part. Looking at a daily chart of the S&P 500, here's what happened today. You can see we have a new all-time closing high just 
barely missing a, an opportunity to close above 5,400, but it certainly seems like uh, we are aiming in that direction. The momentum continues to improve here. This is what we talked about at the uh, you know going into the beginning of this week. After last week's sort of rally and then stall around 53.50, um, you know the question is, does this make a higher high? It certainly seems like we are forming one. Does the RSI confirm a lower high? And that's still an open question because the last couple days, right, Monday and Tuesday session both closing to the upside, which means this momentum is still actively improving uh, as of today. So, uh, you know, if, if we would continue higher for the next two weeks, the RSI would most likely keep pushing higher and would push above 70, and then it would no longer look like a bearish divergence. So some of the charts like Amazon and others have already confirmed a, a, a bearish momentum divergence. Still an open question for the S&P 500. Days like today uh, certainly mean it's, uh, it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion just yet. Looking forward through the rest of this week, we're through earnings season. So this week, it's about uh, economic data. Tomorrow, we have the May CPI number coming out before the uh, market open. We have the Fed meeting uh, today and tomorrow. And tomorrow uh, afternoon, 2 o'clock, the, uh, the Fed statement, 2.30 uh, press conference with uh, Chair Powell. Certainly uh, potential to move markets here. And generally speaking, the way to remember about that is stronger economic data uh, implies that um, the Fed will most likely have to wait to uh, to uh, cut rates, uh, and that the entire timetable probably moves further down. Maybe there are less rate cuts rate cuts uh, in 2024 and 2025 altogether. All of those would be fair questions if uh, the economic data in the morning comes out a little stronger. If uh, the CPI number comes down below expected and expect the market to rally pretty good because that would mean uh, Fed rate cuts are probably more likely. That makes things less expensive. That means rates probably come down and uh, it's going to be more uh, a more ideal setup for uh, for consumers, certainly. Now, with that as the backdrop, though, I do want to show you out of my breadth chart list and I'll include a link so you can actually bring up this chart on your own stock charts login but this is a chart i don't refer to it a ton on the show only because i try to think a little more longer term as much as possible um, because for many of you i know that's the time frame you're kind of thinking about you're looking down the road and not the next minute but maybe the next uh, you know couple weeks next month if not a little bit further however i think regardless of your time frame you want to pay attention to uh indicators that help you understand the short term versus the long term we call a multiple time frame uh, analysis and you know short-term breadth data can be really helpful to help us understand the supply and demand that is happening day to day because that informs and really influences the uh, the broader movements in the market right a, a, a trend is comprised of days and weeks of, uh, of short-term movements. And so thinking about that within the context of the longer trend, I think is, is pretty important, even if you're more of a longer-term investor. Today, the S&P made a new all-time closing high. The S&P index was up about 0.3%. Apple was up over 7%. However, only 36% of the New York Stock Exchange stocks finished higher today. Two-thirds of them actually finished lower. So we have that weird situation here where even though the index is going higher, 9 out of 11 S&P sectors actually closed down on the day. 62% of the New York Stock Exchange listings closed down on the day. And so this is not a big, broad, everything's working kind of advance like it was back in sort of February, right, early March. This is more of a very narrow, there are a small number of huge companies uh, with a lot of optimism being priced in about AI and AI-related stuff and uh, perpetual uh, explosive growth. The average stock is not looking like that. The average stock is feeling a little more like a State Street or a Citigroup or a uh, Southwest or one of those. It's kind of getting, uh, getting, getting dinged today. With that in mind, let's uh, complete the final bar by looking at some of the uh, charts that are on the, actually one more breadth indicator because I can't help myself. One more breadth indicator I want to look at is the uh, percent of stocks making new 52 week highs and lows. The reason why I want to show you that is because over the last week, so here's the uh, net difference of new 52 week highs minus new 52 week lows on the New York Stock Exchange. Here is the raw data looking at um, common stocks only. Uh, closing up and closing down in green and red, respectively. And then for the S&P 500, the number of stocks uh, making a new 52-week high, the new number of stocks making new 52-week lows. Sorry, that's 52-week highs and lows. 
Look how for the last couple days, and certainly so far this week, there have been no more, more new 52-week lows on the New York Stock Exchange than more fit new 52-week highs. Today, it was almost a two-to-one ratio on new 52-week lows versus new 52-week highs. So that is what that looks like. The McClellan Oscillator is still below zero, and these are the sorts of things that speak to a lack of breadth support. This tells you, implies to me, having done this a while, that generally speaking, when you see the market advancing on weaker breadth readings, you should question the sustainability of that move. The market can move with a small number of mega cap growth stocks having good days, which is what we saw today, what we've seen uh, in recent history. However, a bullish outlook overall, I think, is more solidified when you have improving breadth conditions. So one of two things is going to happen here. Either the market starts to deteriorate when we realize that the breadth support is not there and when leading stocks like Apple no longer get a bid and people are just underweighting stocks to take risk off, that's when things can really rotate aggressively to the downside. Or breadth conditions improve as people see the optimism in Apple and imply optimism in other places and say, you know what, this is just a good time to own equities, not just Apple or Alphabet or Meta, but equities in general, breadth conditions would improve. So look to see which of those two things happen. I think that's what you need to know about uh, the future direction of the, uh, these markets. Apple, of course, closing above that 200 level. We've talked about this range bound situation for Apple really being between 165 on the lower end, 195 to 200 on the upper end. When will Apple break out of this range? The answer is today, after yesterday's developer conference, uh, Apple uh, up over 7%, closing just above $200 a share. That's a nice move, I would say, after this sort of day tomorrow. Probably going to be pretty important. Now, of course, it's a big news day with uh, the CPI data and uh, the Fed meeting. So it won't just be about Apple tomorrow. Today was really about Apple's uh, positive reaction after all their announcements yesterday. Tomorrow is going to be, I think, more about a broader assessment of the interest rate environment and the state of the consumer and how this AI optimism fits into a broader sense of the uh, equity space. It's not just Apple, though. You have First Solar uh, up over 5% today. This is a space we've talked about, really has been stalled out here over the last couple of weeks after rallying, breaking above $200 itself. After this nice rounded bottoming pattern, getting above moving average support, breaking above the highs from 2023, but we stalled out here over the last couple of weeks. This finally resolving to the upside with First Solar uh, nearing that $300 level. I think with that short-term break, and I think that reinitiates a pretty bullish structure to this chart. Higher highs, higher lows, new highs, generally speaking, are bullish. The momentum is strong. The relative strength is strong. Those are the types of names that I uh, tend to appreciate participating in. Uh, micro strategy is a really interesting one. I'm going to zoom into just the last six months so we can see what's happened here, right? If you look at the downtrend, March was the uh, peak here in the first quarter. April was a pretty weak month. We ended uh, here in what's called an inverted hammer candle. If you know your candle patterns, right? A downtrend, you have the open and close near the lower end of the day. You have a big uh, upper uh, shadow and no lower shadow. That's called an inverted hammer. Uh, if we make it a candle chart, you'll see what that looks like. Just literally looks like a hammer uh, standing on its head. That is a bullish reversal candle. And you can see that certainly the next couple weeks followed suit beautifully. Now we've stalled out between resistance around 1700, between support here around, we'll call it 1450, also the 50 day moving average right there. So similar to the chart of Apple, kind of in that range bound move, the question is, what do we see? Do we see a break above the upper end or below the lower end? And I would tell you that one of the things that comes to mind as I'm looking at this chart is to do a quick uh, Fibonacci analysis. And if I sort of set the framework here, look how well that this maps out as I'm, uh, as I'm doing it here, right? Take the low. That was a horribly drawn Fibonacci retracement. Hold on. You take the low from January. You take the high from March. 61.8% of the way back down is around 1040, we'll call it. And that was pretty much where you saw that inverted hammer candle. I'm intrigued and fascinated and very much convinced when you see a meaningful candle pattern and it happens at an expected level of support. This Fibonacci framework telling you some potential support levels are just an idea of where you might, might find support. Candle patterns around those levels, just like if you saw an inverted hammer happen at a 200-day moving average, just gives more validity to the fact that we're most likely going to find support there. So the fact that we got that bullish reversal candle at an expected level of support, I think gives you high confidence we're probably going to see a move to, uh, to the upside. Now I would say when, with a chart like this, it's all about that uh, level right above where we're at. I'm just making some lines here. We'll make it look like this. 
this resistance here, right? So we sort of stalled out around 1700, 1720, right? And so I would say getting above that level is key. So one of two things is gonna happen. A MicroStrategy either breaks above 1700, which clears the way to retest the March high around 2000, I would say from a technical perspective, or we fail to hold support, we fail to hold the 50 day, in which case we return back to uh, the previous level of support, which is just above 1000. Don't forget that's a big round number uh, as uh, as well, sort of right around that uh, level. So what's interesting about uh, a chart like MicroStrategy, it almost like a framework sets itself up very nicely. You can look look at where we're at the final bar, as it were, look to the left, and you can identify some of those key levels to uh, to pay attention to. Last chart I'll show you just to highlight some of the uh, the financials that are weaker, right? Think about Apple breaking out, flip that over, and that's kind of what State Street looks like, closing below the 200-day moving average for the first time since November of last year. This is also now testing support around $70 of share. You have a confluence of uh, support between 70 and 72. We've now closed below the 200 day. We're now testing these support levels here. So if and when it gets below 70, I think that's a real negative development. It would suggest likely a return back to the October low around 62. So we're kind of right at that point where you're looking to see if we get follow through. Now that we've had the big down day, down over 4%, do we see additional move lower? The momentum overall is getting pretty negative with the RSI very nearly that uh, that uh, oversold level. So by the way, we talked about uh, Fibonacci retracements with the chart of MicroStrategy. Just a heads up, I will be doing a webcast next week on, uh, on uh, next Tuesday, the 18th, 1 p.m. Eastern. Go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Fibonacci to sign up for that free webcast. We'll be talking about Fibonacci retracements, look at examples like MicroStrategy and others, talk about some uh, some best practices. Folks, that's it for the final bar. Thanks so much for joining us every weekday after the close as we recap the markets using the best practices of technical analysis. Don't forget to click the link in the uh, the description. Actually, I think in the first comment with the link to that chart on uh, daily advancers and decliners. There's so many great charts you can use to make sense of these markets. Let a platform like Stock Charts do some of the work for you and uh, and help stay on top of these market conditions. For Stock Charts and Redmond Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, have a good night.